You're listening to a Roddenberry Podcast. Today is Monday, May 10th, 2021, and this is your daily Star Trek news from the Roddenberry Podcast Network. On today's show, Rod Roddenberry explains to the Motion Picture Association that Idik is the backbone of Star Trek. Paramount Pictures pledges to audition more disabled actors, and Viacom CBS announces strong Q1 results, bolstered by Paramount+. Plus. I'm Allison Pitt, and today's show is supported by people like you through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. First up today, Eugene Rod Roddenberry recently shared some thoughts with the Motion Picture Association on his father's legacy as the centennial anniversary of Gene Roddenberry's birth approaches. In an interview with the MPA website The Credits, Roddenberry spoke to the ideals originally instilled into Star Trek by his father, ideals which Rod believes have elevated and defined Star Trek ever since. Foremost among them, Roddenberry noted, is diversity. The backbone of Star Trek is really the idic philosophy, he said, referencing the Vulcan concept of infinite diversity in infinite combinations. Looking at the diverse nature of the original cast and also classic episodes like Devil in the Dark and Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, Roddenberry pointed out how the original series spoke to divisions humanity still struggles with but also showed its potential to move beyond them. Star Trek wasn't necessarily about the aliens or the starships. It was about humanity, he said. Roddenberry also described how Gene Roddenberry's commitment to diversity lives on in the current iterations of Star Trek. No matter what your ethnic, gender, socioeconomic, religious, political background is, it should all be represented at some level on Star Trek. That's what humanity is and needs to be. That's what Star Trek is. In the interview, Roddenberry, who serves as chief executive officer of Roddenberry Entertainment and executive produces the various new Star Trek series on Paramount+, Plus, also spoke to his father's vision about how futuristic technology could mirror real possibilities. He offered some insight into his relationship with his father, and he told how the great bird of the galaxy lives on both in the characters he created and in very real scientific initiatives from the Roddenberry Foundation, which Rod founded in 1999. You can read Rod Roddenberry's full interview on the Motion Picture Association's website at motionpictures.org. Next up, last week, Variety reported that Paramount Pictures has joined a growing number of companies in the entertainment industry, pledging to increase the representation of disabled actors by following the Ruderman Family Foundation guidelines for auditioning. By following the Ruderman guidelines, Paramount Pictures pledges to actively encourage actors with disabilities to audition for their productions. The full pledge reads, We recognize that disability is central to diversity, that the disability community comprises the largest minority in our nation, and that people with disabilities face seclusion from the entertainment industry, We understand that increasing auditions, no matter the size of the role, is a critical step toward achieving inclusion in the industry. This studio pledges to increase the number of actors and actresses with disabilities who audition for parts on television and in film. Now, Paramount isn't the only company under the Viacom CBS umbrella to join the effort. CBS Entertainment became the first in the industry to sign the Ruderman Pledge in June of 2019. Paramount Pictures chairman and CEO Jim Giannopoulos said of the pledge, Inclusion of individuals with disabilities is central to an authentic commitment to diversity in our industry and in our community. We are proud to adopt these guidelines as a crucial step in the ongoing work of prioritizing and furthering diversity and inclusion, both in the making and in the telling of the stories we share with audiences everywhere. Ruderman Family Foundation President Jay Ruderman praised the commitment in a statement saying, Paramount Pictures has taken a significant step towards cementing a culture of inclusion that the company has already put into practice for years, including by working with actors with disabilities across its divisions 
and making casting decisions that reflect authentic representation in high-profile roles. As more studios adopt these guidelines, disability will continue to assume its rightful role as part of the definition of diversity in Hollywood, and the entertainment industry will be able to fulfill its full potential as a force for pro-social change. Now, I've got more news in a moment, but first, a word from me. This show is supported by people like you through Patreon. Your financial support helps us cover recurring costs like hosting and distribution, and it also helps us invest in the future, finding better ways to bring you more of the Star Trek news you need to know wherever you are. To find out more, just head to patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. You can contribute from just a dollar a month, and with a 16% discount on an annual membership, you can support us for a whole year for around $10. That's patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek news. And a big thanks to you for supporting this show. Right, next up, in case you missed it, last Thursday, Viacom CBS, the parent company of Paramount Plus and the home of the Star Trek universe, announced its 2021 first quarter results. Now, this was a big quarter for Viacom CBS. Despite still feeling the effects of pandemic-related closures, the growth of the streaming business, driven by the launch of Paramount Plus, bolstered year-on-year -year revenues, even managing to beat pre-pandemic numbers. Overall, Viacom CBS first quarter revenue was up 14% on 2020 and up 4% on 2019. Now, the breakdown there is a little hard to compare since Viacom CBS didn't technically exist in Q1 of 2019. Uh, if you'll recall, the Viacom and CBS merger happened in December of that year. But what we can see from the results is that the 2021 revenue, while still being primarily driven by advertising, was also driven by a significant growth of the streaming segment, which now makes up 11% of total revenue. In cash terms, streaming revenue grew by $322 million, an increase over 2020 of 65%. According to Viacom CBS, Star Trek had a measurable hand in that growth. In their results, they said, on Paramount Plus, the biggest drivers of signups, which contributed to $159 million of year-on-year -year growth, were live sports and specials, kids' content, and original programming including The Stand and Star Trek Discovery. Additionally, and a good sign for the performance of the upcoming animated series Star Trek Prodigy, Nickelodeon programming was a significant driver of signups and engagement on Paramount+. Global streaming subscribers have now reached 36 million, up 6 million on the prior quarter. Viacom CBS CEO Bob Backish said of the results, In Q1, we accelerated our expansion in streaming with the launch of Paramount+, Plus, further enhancing Viacom CBS's ecosystem of premium, pay, and free services. The strong consumer response we have seen is evident in today's numbers. Our early momentum in streaming is a testament to the breadth and relevance of our differentiated offerings, Viacom CBS also achieved another strong quarter of results in our advertising and affiliate businesses, which continue to demonstrate the extraordinary power of our company to reach audiences and deliver for our partners globally. You can read Viacom CBS's full first quarter results on their website. Well, that's it for today's daily Star Trek news from the Roddenberry Podcast Network. Don't forget to check out the other great shows on the network at podcasts.roddenberry.com. Daily Star Trek News is produced by me, Allison Pitt, and written by Chris Peterson and Jack Brown. We're supported by people like you through Patreon. Find out how you can add your support at patreon.com forward slash daily Star Trek News. And finally, please make sure that you're signed up for the Daily Star Trek newsletter at dailystartreknews.com forward slash contact. Get all the day's Star Trek news delivered straight to your inbox every weekday morning. I'm back tomorrow with more of the Star Trek news you need to know, and this week's Trek trivia, and a bonus, this week's Trek history. I'll explain that tomorrow. I'm Allison Pitt. Live long and prosper. This is a Roddenberry podcast. For more great podcasts, visit podcast.roddenberry.com.